For years, the debate between Windows and Linux users has felt endless, almost tribal. Windows users often see Linux as complicated, intimidating, or only meant for programmers, while Linux users frequently describe Windows as bloated, restrictive, and increasingly intrusive. But instead of arguing online, I decided to do something far more interesting. I asked a group of everyday Windows users to switch to Linux for one full week and document their experience honestly. No scripts, no bias, no pressure to like it. Just real people using Linux as their main operating system for work, entertainment, and daily life. What happened over those seven days genuinely shocked me, and not always in the ways you might expect. The group included a mix of people who represent typical Windows users. There was a university student who mostly used their laptop for studying, browsing, and media consumption. A small business owner who relied heavily on office apps, email, and accounting software. A gamer who spent most of their time on Steam and multiplayer titles. A freelance graphic designer used to Adobe software. And finally, an office worker whose entire computing life revolved around Windows, Chrome, Zoom, and basic productivity tools. None of them had meaningful Linux experience before this experiment. Some had heard of Ubuntu, a few had seen Linux mentioned on YouTube, but for all practical purposes, Linux was unknown territory. Before the week started, almost all of them shared the same expectations. They assumed Linux would be hard to install, confusing to use, visually outdated, and incompatible with their favorite software. A few were worried they would constantly need to use the terminal. One participant even joked that they expected their laptop to turn into a hacker movie screen full of green text. These expectations mattered because they shaped how surprising the results ended up being. We chose Linux distributions carefully to avoid setting anyone up for failure. Each participant got a distro match to their needs. The student and office worker were given Linux, Mint with Cinnamon. The business owner used Ubuntu with GNOME. The gamer was set up on Pop! OS, the designer tried Fedora with KDE Plasma, installation was done together, but the participants controlled the mouse and keyboard while I only explained things when absolutely necessary. This alone produced the first surprise. Every single participant commented on how easy the installation was. No one expected to reach a fully working desktop in under 20 minutes. Compared to their memory of Windows installations, the Linux installers felt faster, cleaner, and far less annoying. New force sign-ins, no product keys, no ads, no pop-ups asking them to enable services they didn't understand. The first day was all about exploration. The desktops looked modern, clean, and polished. Several participants openly admitted they expected Linux to look ugly or outdated, but that assumption disappeared within minutes. The student compared Linux Mint to a cleaner version of Windows 10. The designer was impressed by KDE, Plasma's animations, and customization options. Even the office worker, who normally hates change, said the desktop felt familiar enough to not be stressful. The biggest surprise on day one was how quickly people stopped thinking about the operating system and just started using their computers. By the second day, reality started to set in. This was the day they began installing software and setting up their real workflows. Browsers were easy. Chrome, Firefox, and Brave were all available. Media players worked instantly. Spotify had native support. Zoom installed without an issue. File management felt straightforward. This shattered another common myth that Linux lacks basic apps. For most daily tasks, Linux felt boringly normal, which in this context was a huge compliment. The business owner was particularly vocal about this. Email worked. PDFs opened flawlessly. Printing worked without drama, something they said Windows had failed at more than once. LibreOffice initially caused some hesitation, but after opening and editing documents, they admitted it handled their needs better than expected. The interface felt different from Microsoft Office, but not unusable. By the end of day two, they were surprised at how little they missed Windows. The gamer's experience was one of the most interesting parts of the experiment. Going in, they assumed Linux gaming would be a disaster. That assumption lasted about 10 minutes. Steam installed easily and Proton handled the majority of their library without any tweaking. Popular titles launched, controllers worked, and performance was surprisingly good. Some games even ran smoother than on Windows, likely due to lower background system usage. There were a few games that didn't work, and anti-kit issues still existed, but the gamer admitted that Linux gaming was far better than they had been led to believe. By midweek, they were actively checking ProtonDB and learning about Wine without being prompted. The third day brought the first real frustrations. Small things began to stand out. Some keyboard shortcuts behaved differently. 
Certain proprietary software simply wasn't available. The graphic designer struggled the most here. Adobe apps were not an option. And while alternatives like GIMP, Krita, and Inkscape were powerful, they required adjustment. This was the one area where Linux clearly fell short for this user. While they appreciated the performance and stability, they admitted that switching fully would require changing their entire professional workflow. Still, even they were surprised by how capable the open source tools were once they gave them a fair chance. Something unexpected happened around day four. Instead of complaining about Linux, participants started complaining about Windows. The office worker mentioned how quiet their system felt. No sudden updates. No background processes slowing things down. No random reset. The students said their laptop battery lasted longer than usual. The business owner liked that the system didn't nag them with notifications. These weren't flashy features, but they made a strong impression. Linux started to feel calm, respectful, and efficient. Customization also became a talking point. Participants enjoyed changing themes, icons, and layouts without installing sketchy third-party tools. The designers spent hours tweaking KDE Plasma, something they admitted they actually enjoyed. The gamer customized their desktop to show system stats in game launchers. The student changed themes multiple times just because they could. What stood out was that Linux made customization feel like a built-in feature rather than a hack. By day five, confidence had grown. The terminal, once feared, became a curiosity rather than a threat. Participants started using it voluntarily for simple tasks, guided by online tutorials. Instead of feeling intimidated, they felt empowered. The idea that Linux forces you to use the terminal turned out to be misleading. You don't need it. But when you do use it, it feels powerful rather than scary. Several participants commented that Windows PowerShell never made them feel this way. Performance differences became even more noticeable. Older laptops felt faster. Systems booted quicker. Apps launched almost instantly. Multitasking felt smoother. The student, whose laptop struggled on Windows, said Linux made it feel like a new machine. This was one of the most consistent reactions across all participants. Linux felt lightweight and responsive in a way they were not used to. Day six was when the biggest emotional shift happened. When asked how they felt about returning the Windows after the experiment, most participants hesitated. The gamers said they could see themselves dual. The students said they might install Linux permanently. The office worker said they dreaded dealing with Windows updates again. Even the designer, despite software limitations, admitted they enjoyed using Linux more than expected and felt more in control of their system. Of course, Linux was not perfect. Hardware compatibility caused a few issues. One participant had trouble with a Wi-Fi adapter initially. Another missed a specific Windows-only app. Learning new settings took time. Linux still requires a willingness to learn, and that is an honest barrier for some users. But what shocked me was how small these issues felt compared to the benefits they experienced. On the final day, we sat down and discussed whether Linux lived up to or exceeded expectations. Every single participant said Linux was nothing like what they imagined. It was not slow. It was not ugly. It was not impossibly complex. In fact, several said it felt more logical than Windows. The biggest shock was that Linux didn't feel like a compromise. For most tasks, it felt like an upgrade. The experiment revealed something important about the current state of Linux. The biggest barrier to adoption is not usability or performance. It's perception. Many Windows users have outdated ideas about Linux that no longer reflect reality. Modern Linux desktops are polished, powerful, and user-friendly. They respect the user's time and hardware. They don't spy, nag, or force unwanted changes. Once people experience that firsthand, it's hard to ignore. What surprised me most was not that Linux worked, but how quickly people adapted to it. Within days, habits changed. Fear disappeared. Curiosity replaced resistance. Linux stopped being that weird operating system and became just a computer that did what it was supposed to. Do quietly, efficiently, reliably. This doesn't mean Linux is for everyone. Some users will always need Windows for specific software or games. Others simply don't want to learn something new, and that's okay. But this experiment proved that the gap between Windows and Linux is far smaller than most people think. For many users, switching is no longer a huge leap. It's a small step. After watching these Windows users live with Linux for a week, one thing became clear. Linux isn't the future because it's perfect. It's the future because it gives users choice, control, and respect. 
And once people experience that, even briefly, it changes how they look at their computers forever.